<laughs> it's gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> Stop looking terrified. Just look normal. <laughs> everyone, my name is Bethany, and this is my channel, Denise Thoughts, <laughs> and this is my husband being awkward. <laughs> but this is my husband, hence his name is Billy. Hi. <laughs> I thought I had seen this done a few times on some of the other channels where some of the romance booktubers play a game with their husband about books. Okay. <laughs> is this like a sexy game? <laughs> No. <laughs> I don't play anymore. <laughs> Why would we film that and post it on YouTube? A man can do it. <laughs> oh my god. I knew this was going to be the case. Anyway, I think there's just going to be a lot of laughter for me. I apologize. We're going to play a game. Well, I should give credit to In Love and Words does this with her husband and Steph from... Stephanie's romance book talk does also does this with her husband. With Hi mixed, to the husbands. <laughs> with mixed results. I actually think my husband might be very good at this game. So basically what you do is they have to figure out what the book is about based on the cover only, not reading the back cover and looking at the description. Okay. <laughs> I actually think he might be really good at this. You don't think you're going to be very good at this? You, like, guess my Hallmark movies within the first five minutes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I ruin them for her. All the time. So I thought it'd be really fun, and people could also see this lovely man in my life, in my videos. I thought it'd be a little, a little bit fun thing to do. So, again, I think he's actually going to be pretty good at this. So I have two groups here of books. I'm not going to tell you what genre they are. Okay. I'm not going to tell you the genre of the book. I think okay. I, I think you'll get it after a while. Okay. Are we starting off with that top one? I don't know yet. I'm going to show. I'm going to show the people. Oh. First. Because the people will know what genre this is and what books these are. Because they're pretty well okay. known, popular ones. Okay. Okay. I'm a I'm a part of the writing community, so if I get this wrong, <laughs> there goes my reputation. <laughs> not this is not you don't he writes horror stories and and this is this is not horror okay so i know it's not horror yeah well obviously you know it's not horror you know i don't read horror <laughs> <laughs> so do you well i can start with the bottom book since you haven't seen that cover first all up to you and that way i'll go in blind i have to show the audience first so you can look at the blurbs you can look at the author you can't look at the back cover and description and so what am i supposed to tell you I don't know, just to get an idea of what the, just tell me what you think the book is about. So, Let's or what this. is the synopsis of what you think the plot is about. Okay. All right. You ready? Yes. Okay. So. Strange the Dreamer. Uh-huh. By Laini Taylor. Uh-huh. By the New York Times bestselling author of The Daughter of Smoke and Bone Trilogy. Oh, is Bone uh, the Lovely Bones? No. Okay. I think... I think I s oh, no, you can't look at the back cover. Oh, I'm not allowed to. No. You said I could look at the synopsis. I know. I said you couldn't look at the synopsis. Oh, okay. You can look at the blur. If there's any blurbs from other authors on the front cover, you can look at those. Oh, that's... This game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I t two other husbands that I've watched have done it. Okay. So, obviously, it's a, a uh, signed copy. Okay. So, here's what I'm going to... Here's what I'm going to say. Okay. If I was going to start out... Huh. I would say it's about an anthropomorphic gold sheet <laughs> that dreams of one day being a butterfly. Oh. Are those moths? Those are moths. Those are moths. <laughs> <based on the, laughs> kind of. They're not. Moths are kind of mothish. <laughs> you can tell by the antenna. <laughs> He's kind of afraid of moths. I am not joking about this. They're not real moths. You're fine. They're not moving. You did this on purpose. <laughs> no, I didn't. I totally didn't notice that they were moths. You're not my wife anymore. <laughs> so Stranger the Dreamer is the New York Times best-selling book, is the latest book by New York Times best-selling author Laini Taylor. Uh-huh. And it is about 
a young woman okay. who dreams she is wealthy because of the gold. She's either wealthy or well-to-do. Mm-hmm. And she dreams of a more fulfilling life. <laughs> I can't tell if that's affirmative laughter or <laughs> negative laughter. I am just laughing. So, okay, well, what's, what do you think? What Do you have any idea what genre that might be? Yes. Okay, what do you think the genre might be? I want to say, based on Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, mm-hmm. typically authors stay within a, uh, a genre or two. Right. Daughter of Smoke sounds either sci-fi or fantasy. Okay. Bone also sounds sci-fi or fantasy. Okay. So, if it was Mm sci-fi, the book would have more, like, machination type things. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to go fantasy. Okay. So, I'm going to say, I'm I'm placing a hard bet on fantasy. Okay. And so, so I'll tell, I'm not going to have you go on... I'm not going to have you go on too much about it, but I will say that strangely, you're part right. You're just focusing on the wrong character. Interestingly enough, strange, strange. The dreamer is not the woman looking for filling life, but there is a woman who is looking for a fulfilling life in this book. Boom. Metaphors. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, the gold is her current life and they're flying off. To find a more fulfilling life. (laughs) Like, that's not bad. Strange the Dreamer, actually, though. Strange the Dreamer is uh, is actually going on a journey to a land that's mysterious, that is known for an affluent, used to be an affluent part of the community. Um, (laughs) Keep going. And there is a young woman living there in the community that he's going off to who does want to get away and... Oh, so she's like the love interest, not yes, the protagonist. Correct. Okay. But so that part was actually pretty close. Not bad. She has an ability where they see each other in each. They, she has an ability where she's able to control dreams, and she, she actually starts talking to him in his dreams. Oh, okay. Okay. Like Ray and Kylo. Not quite. No, not Star oh. Wars. <laughs> Can I just think every single one of them is a Star Wars novel? <laughs> But like I said, not bad actually. She does, and I did forget she does control her ability through mods. I'm sorry, <laughs> I forgot about that part. So yeah, not bad. Good start. I'm not going to confirm the genre yet because I'm not going to try to confirm the genre yet. Okay, next. Red Queen Power is a dangerous game by Victoria Avayard. Avayard. I think, I think it's Avayard. Okay, well, it's a queen's crown, however, or tiara, no, no, keep crown, right? Queen's, queen's, mm-hmm, okay. It's a crown. Um, this crown goes all the way around, tiara's only half. Of course I know this. You shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> so it's inverted, so typically a crown's worn like that. Uh-huh. So obviously... She is a queen afflicted with a terrible disease where she walks on her hands. <laughs> no, seriously, though. Okay, so power is a dangerous game. Mm-hmm. So that means that this is someone who either is in power or rises to power as a queen. Okay. I'm going to say fantasy trope. Mm-hmm. I'm not allowed to look at the back, am I? Mm-mm. Okay. So... Let me look closer. Maybe there's more hints on the crown. I'm I'm think I'm picking up Game of Thrones type vibes. Okay. There's a struggle for the throne. Okay. Between a queen. Mm-hmm. And I would say another queen, but I think that's too cliche. So I want to say a king. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, no, it's another queen. I'm not saying anything. There's a struggle for the crown. She either rose to power or is in power. And I'm going to say there's a love interest who ends up betraying her. Oh. The love interest, he or she, may or may not redeem themselves, but there is a betrayal in this book. 
That may or may not be a spoiler. Why are you spoiling things on me? I'm not saying I'm spoiling anything. I'm just saying it may not, may not, it may or may not be a spoiler. Because I don't want to say if it's a spoiler or not, if it's true or not. She wouldn't have said it may or may not be a spoiler if it wasn't a spoiler. <laughs> trying to tell you indirectly that you got it right without confirming it. <laughs> I can edit that. Anyway. So I'm two for two. So, yeah, actually, well, not quite. Close. Do I have to come up with the character names? <laughs> no. Do I have to come up with their their journey? So she's, uh, she does, she's a peasant that rises to power. Oh, so I got that right. Because she uh, ends up having ability that usually is only reserved for the elite. Okay. Um, but she doesn't fight for the crown or anything. There's nothing. There's no sort of, no sort of battle to fight for the crown. Okay. There may be a betrayal. By a lover. A love interest. Ah, uh, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> two, four. Two. This also, you were actually pretty good spot on in the Game of Thrones because this is called often, uh, it's referenced as Game of Thrones meets Hunger Games. So that's oh. pretty, that was a very good, that was actually a very good guess. Hunger Game of Thrones. Am I two for two or am I two for two? <laughs> I'd say like you're nailing them pretty good. Yeah, you're nailing them pretty good. I think you did better in Red Queen. I'd give you that one. I don't know if I did Strange Dreamer, you went in a different direction, but... But I, aside yeah. from the protagonist right, being yes. not the protagonist. Yes. You got part of the plot right. So I'm two true. for two. Perfect. <laughs> Just one for two. I like this game. One for two. <laughs> okay, next one. Okay, this is a little more detail. Okay. Number one, New York Times bestselling author Sabaa Tahir. I think I said that right. I think that's how you say it. An Ember in the Ashes. Why are you showing them? I'm showing him again. <laughs> I'll show him as much as I want. I'm the guest on this show. Yes, honey, you are. So I see a woman with a bracelet, and the bracelet seems to have an, an indigenous um, marking on it. And there is a man. What? <laughs> There's a man who's a ninja. And the sword is in his sheath, but he's also holding another sword. So where does he put the other sword? Read to find out. He's wearing a red hood, so I'm going to say this is fantasy as well. Maybe historical fantasy. An ember. Oh, and there's a sword through the word ember. I'm, this is not an official guess, but I'm assuming her name is Ember. I could be wrong. And his name is Ashes. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> So, some sort of destruction, some sort of, there was a genocide or a town or a village was raided or razed to the ground, and either he or she, I'm going to say she, because it's usually the female protagonist who's the ember who, like, pops up out of a village, or, you know, there's destruction everywhere, and then there's this young, beautiful woman who's like, these were my people. He seems to be a... What? I'm just giggling at you. Go on. He seems to be a mercenary or some kind of guy who basically comes through, see, meets her. Maybe he's on a journey or maybe he's like a looter like Flynn from uh, Rapunzel. Mm -hmm. Meets her. She wants him to help either restore her village or her people or get revenge on the people who burned it down. She is the ember in the ashes. He's reluctant. There's a lot of back and forth, a little bit of sexual tension. He finally comes to, uh, or at least he finally comes to help her, falls in love with her. I'm going to assume if I'm right, there's a point where there's a misunderstanding where she thinks he's betraying her or he thinks she ran away, but then that gets made up in the plot. And they're like, oh, never mind. It was misunderstanding. <laughs> and then they finally either restore what was lost or build something new. 
Three for three. <laughs> well, you jumped ahead a little bit because this is only the first book in the series. But I think there are some really good points. So, yes, uh, this is Laia. Laia is an, the one who's the ember in the ashes. And <laughs> But you're totally wrong about him. He's the soldier that actually murdered her parents. Oh. Well, not, not he's not the potentially the soldier. He's of the race of, of the people of the soldiers that he's a part of the group of that killed her parents. So what you're telling me is you have failed this city. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. No. So there was actually quite a bit that was right. She actually doesn't come to trust him like hardly at all. She actually tries to infiltrate his... Um, Do they bone? <laughs> so yeah, so no, that was actually pretty good. I would say that you got her character right, but but a little bit not not with not his. But the plot was uh, uh, okay. yeah. So three for three. <laughs> I think he did better on the on Red, Red Queen in that one. Okay, next one. Thirty five girls, one crown. The competition of a lifetime. The selection. By Kira Cass, that's a name I've heard before. Mm -hmm. New York Times bestseller. There's a tiara. Let me guess. There are 35 girls mm -hmm. in a competition for a crown. Mm -hmm. And it's the competition of a lifetime. <laughs> that's the blurb, honey. You already... You already I, I, you Was I wrong? No. Yeah, oh, okay, I got it. No. Next book. <laughs> No, 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 no. Did, did I get it? You gotta I get guess. It. <laughs> no, you gotta guess a little bit more than that. I'm trying not to go Hunger Games with this. Why? What do you mean? Because I, I don't think it's Hunger Games. Okay. Because if I was gonna go Hunger Games with this, I was gonna say all 35 are competing, then they realize they're being manipulated, and they go against the... They go against the, the competition, and they set up a democracy instead of a monarchy or anything. Something like that. Okay. I don't think that's what this is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Only because the cover makes me think Journey of Self-Exploration. Oh. Interesting. Okay, I feel like I was right the first time. <laughs> Don't read me. That's not part of the game. That's what he's doing. He's trying to read me, and I'm trying not to give any clues. She's <laughs> so it's a competition, one crown, a lot of bickering, a lot of fighting, one main antagonist. She probably has a bunch of the girls with her uh, on her side. One main protagonist who probably has one or two of the 35 girls on her side. They're the ones who want to play the competition fairly they want the best to win the other girls probably going to cheat by any means necessary and the other girls are also going to help then they come together when they realize hey life would be better if we didn't have to go through what are they competing for though they're competing to be the princess the bride of a groom of a prince this is why he's good at it. <laughs> Was I right? Yes, you were right. Oh, oh, okay then. <laughs> no, 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 no. So he falls in love with her. And I bet you anything, she loses the competition, but he still chooses her. <laughs> no, well, I actually don't, don't remember if that's what happens in the, in the third book. This is only the first one. Sorry. So am I guessing the book or the trilogy? <laughs> actually, it's, we know what it's called, what it's referenced. It's referenced Hunger Games meets The Bachelor. Uh, Wait, so I was right about The Hunger Games thing? Yeah, you were kind of right about The Hunger Games thing, too. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to be right about that one. <laughs> and there is an antagonist girl that, like, creates drama and stuff like that. Yeah, that's but that's a common trope, I think. You played you played that knowing that. I think. There's a lot of common tropes that I'm just kind of... Yeah, that you're zeroing in on, I can tell. So, yeah, no, you actually nailed that one. So I'd say more two for two, actually. So, how many have I had? Four? Four. <laughs> I'd say two for two. <laughs> okay, and now the last one. Which you've seen already, but... Cinder. 
The Lunar Chronicles, number one best-selling author by Marissa... Who's Mar Marissa Mayer? Meyer. Meyer. Marissa Meyer. She wrote something, right? Did she write? No. Twilight, no? No. That's no. Stephanie Meyer. Stephanie Meyer. All right, so this is about the sister of a woman who married a vampire. <clears throat> No, that's not what it's about. And then the werewolf imprinted on their child, which was kind of weird. <laughs> kind of creepy. And everyone sparkled. <laughs> no, no, no. Try again. Cinderella. Hey, very nice. The word cinder, the castle motif in the font, and the red slipper. Boom. Okay, but what, ab what about... But what makes it a little bit different than why, what kind of cinder or Cinderella retelling does it look like it would be? Are these dystopians? Oh. These are dysto These are dystopian. So I'm seeing in her, I don't know if you could see right there. So she has like a mechanical leg. So either she has something amputated or she's an android. And the way your eyes twitched meant android. So she, I'm totally reading her. We've been together for like 14 years. I can read her like a book. 13, but yes. You said 14 last time. No, it was 13. We just, we just celebrated our 13th anniversary. And it's caught on camera that I got that wrong. <laughs> Four and a half years married. Just celebrated our 13 year anniversary. We met in 2008. 13 years. I was just checking to know, to see if we got it. Please edit that out. Right, sure. So it's Cinderella. Mm -hmm. How do you retell Cinderella as an android sci-fi book, knowing it's dystopian? I mean, that's all you have to give. Okay. I got it. <laughs> I think that's all you have to give. You don't have to go five into details. Five five. <laughs> this is like three for three for five. Five times. <laughs> yes, this is, uh, this is usually called Star Wars meets Fairy Tales. There's a whole series of other characters as well. Okay. Star Wars meets fairy tales. Yeah. There's Cinder. There's uh, Cinder's okay. the first one. And then there's Scarlet, which is Red Riding Hood. Cress is Rapunzel. And Winter is Snow White. Nice. Okay. No, you nailed that one. This one's kind of obvious in the, in the, in the cover, though. But yeah. Very accurate. These are all, except for the, probably the exception of this one, these are all dystopian. So they're actually YA fantasy, young adult fantasy. Okay. So, but very, very close. So you you nailed it for that. Um, and, Circle gets and the square. The, and the four, and these particular four are more, are like more dystopian. Um, Strains of Dream Ride, say, is more strictly fantasy. It doesn't really resemble our world that much. So. I did pretty good. You did very good. I knew you were going to do very well at this. I had no. I aced it. <laughs> I had no doubts. So there you have it. There's my husband guessing YA fantasy novels. I hope you found this as fun as I did. He's a delight. I usually always laugh, and it's usually always a good time with him. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And he did pretty well. I'm going to say he got three out of five. Tell me down in the comments how many you thought he got. <laughs> and um, let's just don't, best, don't boost his ego any more than it already is at. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. If you like what you saw and want to see more things, bookish things from me, please subscribe and hit likes and bells. I'd really appreciate it. As well as you can follow me on all my social medias down below. I might even post about this guy every once in a while. And, uh, and you can follow me on all the things. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again soon. Bye!